Coaches, welcome to Coaches Mind Podcast, where we're here to connect, serve, inspire you, and make you think. Happy holidays. I hope you're enjoying this year. Um, I know it's been a rough year, but there's a lot of positive things that came out of it, if you see the positive. So I'll make this introduction quick to this next podcast. This is a great podcast. This podcast is geared to new coaches or coaches trying to take over struggling programs. This is kind of one of my introductions of some of the things I've gone through. I've taken over two struggling programs and we were able to flip those programs and do things in those programs that's never been done before within those programs. Um, It's a lot of hard work, but with that hard work came a lot of learning, came a lot of sacrifices. So I would love for you to get your notepads out, paper, pencils, and take notes. This podcast will help you if you're a coach driven or inspired to take over a program or be a head coach of a program. So enjoy this podcast. Take notes, like I said, and enjoy. I'll see y'all later. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I think is very important is when you decide to become a head coach, I think you got to know yourself. I think what happens is as assistants, we look at our head coach and mentors and a lot of other things. and We take pieces and bits from them. um, And and it was successful where you were at with that style or wherever you may go. But I think you got to know yourself. And and for me and my experience was um, I I was a guy that was rooted in football. That's that's what I did for a very long period of time. So that's kind of what I know and what I knew going through this coaching ring, coaching rings. But as I started shifting and going more into the basketball world, I had to find out who I was as a basketball coach. So I had to find out what are my likes and dislikes as a coach and as a person. Um, There's some things that might be some pet peeves that you don't even know about um, that you do now as an assistant. But if you're a head coach, it it would bug the the heck out of you. And that's something I had to figure out and explore on my own. um, Some of the likes and dislikes. Um, What are your core beliefs as a coach and as a person? I think when you know yourself and you understand your core beliefs as a coach and a person, you're able to genuinely change and build the program. Um, but if you if you go off what you have learned, and I've done this before about what you've learned, and what you took from your other programs, and I'm going to install it into um, another program. It may work, it may not. But I think if you genuinely have your core being of who you are instilled into the program and your beliefs, I truly think the change will come about so much faster. Um, and, and you believe it wholeheartedly, just the, the being of who you are. So for example, like me, I'm, I'm a servant, I'm a servant leader. So in my program, I preach being a servant. I preach being a teammate. I preach being these things because we, we all sometimes coaches preach it, but is that a core being of who you are? Is that just what you think is going to get you the W's and change your program? So I think you need to know your core being of, of a person. I think another thing is, how do you handle stress, change, or not having control? I started realizing with me as a coach, especially when I became a head coach, I like this idea of control. It's a sense of control, however that may look. Um, But that having that control felt like I was doing the right things because I was the one that had the decision and I knew what was going on. But I think if you understand yourself, how you handle these items and these pieces in this coaching world, it's all it's always changing. It's never going to be the same and it's always changing. And then understanding how you handle that stress, whether it's stress of winning, stress of building, stress of getting people in your program. How do you handle those things? Next, your leadership style. What what kind of leader are you? Um, and, and I think you need to be genuine and honest with yourself. I think in coaching, we all say that we want to serve and be transformative. We want to really help the kids out. And, and, it, and that is OK. And that's that's cool. And I think you need to do that as you go in. But I think you need to be realistic on understanding yourself. If you are a transactional guy, meaning, you know, one for one kind of a person, I think that is OK. And I think you need to understand that and, and, and live with that. And, and instill that in 
and grow that within your program and your being. But I think you need to know your leadership style. So for me, I'm transformative and I'm a servant. And I know that and that's the core being of who I am. I think you need to know that about yourself, too. And if you do know that, it's really easy to go into interviews and things like that of being just your genuine self. And then next, what is your style of coaching? Are you a screamer, yeller? Uh, are you silent or are you both? Um, but I think you got to have a style of coaching of more or less consistent. And, and it's okay to be that person. If you're a yeller, be a yeller, but yell the right things. Don't just yell just to yell. If you're silent, make sure you say the right things at the right time. If you're both, then be both. But I think you need to know your style of coaching. If you don't know your style, explore your style and feels what's natural to you. I know a coach that says he's a natural positive coach and, and that's OK. And I think that's good that he's a natural positive coach. But then a lot of coaches are naturally aren't a positive coaching style, but they're very, very good at what they do. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. Next step number two. understand and know your culture. Now, this is a key thing. If you're taking over any struggling program, any struggling program, I'm going to tell you right now, the culture that is there is not a winning one. So you, as the head guy, need to understand what the head culture is, implement it, and continue to push, drive the culture you believe is important to be successful. That is critical. And I think that's the biggest thing that we do as young coaches is so much information out there, so many ideas that we don't always hone in our core beliefs or build that culture. We want to get in and some of the, and, and I made this mistake, we want to attack the X's and O's because we need to make sure we win and get these guys on the same page. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I've ever made in my coaching career is attacking the X's and O's ASAP. I think you need to attack the culture and not worry about winning right away and not worry about winning, I think, in the first couple of years. As bad as we want to win, I'm not saying not to care about winning, but that shouldn't be your main focus, building and understanding your culture. And then how do you define, how do you define culture? For me, basically, what I've come to gear to and what I've learned and I got, you know, from Focus 3, which is a very, very great podcast, is culture are behaviors that drive the success that you view, meaning your behavior drives your success. Behaviors drive winning. So what behaviors do you want to create within your program that's going to keep you and get you to be successful? That's how I define culture, behaviors that drive winning. However that may look, it's different for everybody. Next, belief, behavior, outcome. So what are your beliefs? And like we talked about the last time, I know yourself. I think you got to have at least three to five core beliefs of beings of who you are that you can implement within your program and then create behaviors of how they look. Um, so, for example, I'm going to use Urban Meyer's competitive excellence. He says that being competitive excellence is being able to or, or competitiveness or playing hard. Um, is basically going from point A to point B as hard as you can for eight seconds. And the eight seconds is a game of football, um, is giving it all you got for that amount of time. So for us here at Graham Kapowson is energy execution and defense. And so how I define energy is going from point A to point B under control for your teammates with all you got. So I do that to define the behaviors of what we're looking for. And then after you define the behavior, what should the outcome be when your athletes or players are doing your belief behaviors? What are the outcomes to that? And I think you need to chart it, make it. Um, I know a coach that did it in a the John Wooden uh, pyramid. You can make a pyramid out of it, but I think you need to chart it, the belief, behaviors, and outcomes. That is critical. I think that's one of the things you need to tap into even before you become a head coach. So in an interview, you have the core being of what you're going to be talking about. Think next, write it out. Uh, write it out in a chart. Um, you break down the chart of belief, behaviors, and outcomes and write down your three beliefs or your five beliefs um, that you think a program needs to be extremely successful. Um, if it's competitive excellence, how do you how do the behaviors look for competitive excellence? And then what are the outcomes for competitive excellence? And it's different for everything. And I think you just need to know yourself and your core being and you need to write that out and write that down. 
I think next, I think you need to have high standards and not high rules, but standards because standards are easily something that people strive to meet. Rules are looking are ways for people to break. So if you have a rule, right, and, and you look at look at look at yourself, guide yourself. Look, at, what rules do you look at to see how much you can bend, or how much you can get around, or how much of that rule you can or can't do? Um, but if you have standards, it's something or a behavior that. You-